said I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. This who I choose to be. I'm free indeed. Yep. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose to be. Sing it. Said I'm free indeed. Say. I'm free indeed. Yep. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I choose. It's who Sing it again I right there. Hey. Said I'm free indeed. Say. Free indeed. Yeah. In Christ I'm free Can you just say this with us? No chains are holding me. It's who I choose. Come on. Said I'm free indeed. Love. I'm free indeed. Yeah. In Christ I'm free indeed. Come on. Netflix movie last night? Girl, I did. It was good. What did you think about it? I loved it. It was such good quiet time. I watched it after the kids were asleep. I did too. And I thought I, it was so good. And I am so ready for this shopping experience without them. Me too. Oh, did you see that sign? I know it's, it's saying that we have to have face coverings when we enter in here. I mean, with everything going on with COVID, I guess it's the best thing to do. I mean, but everything has changed from um, our community, our church, even our homes and schools, we're all required to wear these masks now. I know it. I guess it's for the best. We just put our mask on. Can't have this shopping experience without it. Right, girl. I'll okay, you ready? Let's go. Okay. Oh no! Where are we supposed to do that? I can 
gingerbread shall be in the play. Hi, I'm Elle Weaver. And I'm Ava Weaver. And we, we want to talk, talk about, about the pandemic. Ava, how do you feel about the virus? Sad. I I want to be with my friends, but I'm not because the virus been like here like for like a long, 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 long time. Elle, how do you stay safe? By washing my hands and wearing masks and getting a lot of exercise done. Ava, how do you feel about staying home? Happy, um, we, me and my family, we play games, play charades, we will, we uh, um, have movie nights. Elle, how do you feel when you go back to school? That I'm happy because I'm with my, with my friends and teacher. Bye. Bye. Hey Trey, what do you think about the coronavirus? Everything has changed. Yeah, we can't go anywhere. We can't go outside or we can't go nowhere. We can't go to church, but sometimes we can. We can't go inside of church, though. We really, 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 really miss it. Me too. It just makes me want to cry. Well, there's a time for everything when you can cry and laugh. Oh, and sometimes at Grimmie's church, we have to stay outside because, um, and we have to stay six feet apart from another person because um, it's the safe place. Yeah, I was there. I remember when we didn't go to the church. I was kind of confused. So was I. It was really cold outside, and I really was like, why can we not go inside, Mom? And she said, because the coronavirus is out. And I didn't even know how the coronavirus started. Yeah, I me mean, either. But we were following the rules thing, six feet apart from everybody. <laughs> Are you guys ready to go back to school? No. I am. Same year ago, I would have been. I want to stay safe during these times. A lot of people are dying. Yes, that's true. It's all over the news, too. But, you know, it's the time for everything. It is. Times have changed a lot lately. Sports are getting taken away. No more hanging out with friends. No more going to the movies or mall. But, hey, remember the good times at school? That yeah. home is. <laughs> Everybody's getting it. Hey, hey. But how are we gonna prepare for all these changes? Well, we can start by doing a TikTok. Okay, let's go. Oh, child, I'm tired. Three stores later. Girl, we spent too much money. Do you hear me? And too much time. Okay. Lines were long. Walmart, Dollar Tree. Everywhere we went. Even Michaels was long. Right? Everybody still had their masks. I mean, it is crazy how many changes have taken place due to COVID-19. Students have to engage in remote learning. Do you know how hard that is gonna be for some kids? Yes. I mean, meetings have been online. Zoom, Zoom, girl, I am tired of Zoom. Do you hear me? Zoom everything. I Zoom this, it. Zoom that. I mean, it's just Zoom. Sports are limited. You know, so many people can come I know, in. No, but it's like some of the systems are all similar and in place, but uh, you know, other illnesses are making it extremely, extremely scary. Right. We could actually have coronavirus and think of something else. I mean, some of the symptoms are fevers and chills and coughing, really? fatigue, muscle aches, headache. I mean, I'm a teacher. I have all those every day. Every day. Yeah. Loss <laughs> of taste, smell, sore throat, uh, congestion, runny nose, vomiting, even diarrhea. Oh, wow. We really have to pay attention. That is so many symptoms. Yeah, you're right. Especially that diarrhea. Yeah, to get you. Diarrhea. Oh, Sister Tanil, how are you doing on today? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. Guys, it's Miss A. Hello, <laughs> how are you doing? You know what? We just talked about the coronavirus and some of the symptoms of the coronavirus. I think I heard fever, chills, nausea, Diarrhea. Yeah. Fatigue. Diarrhea. Yeah, I heard all of those things. <laughs> and you know what? It reminds me of a story in the Bible about a little boy who was sick. Yes. And it was the government official's son. It was that? the government official's son. Oh my gosh. Jesus. He was actually traveling through Galilee. Okay, yes. and then you know he when he went to Cana and he turned the water into wine, and he then did. the government official had heard that Jesus was there. And then he said he went to him and he said, Jesus. My son is ill. Yes. He's, will you heal him? And Jesus said, will you not believe in me unless I show you miraculous signs and wonders? And you know what, Miss A? I think Jesus was getting pretty frustrated because he had already performed a miracle at the wedding. Exactly. Exactly. And so 
the uh, government official said, Lord, Lord, please. Yeah. Will you please heal my son before he dies? And the Lord said, go home. Yes, Your Lord. son is well. He is alive. He's going to be healed. Can you believe that? Yes. I mean, when somebody speaks to you, somebody normal, if they say, hey, go home. Your son or your daughter is going to be healed. Are you going to believe them? Well, in that case, if it's just some ordinary person, it would be hard to believe. But in this particular case, because it was Jesus, yes, exactly. I would believe. And he did. And so he decided to go on and went, go home. And when he did, on his way, some of the servants came up to him and they said, hey, hey, your son is alive and he's well. And he was like, wait a minute. Yeah. What do you mean? He still had a hard time believing. And so he said, well, what, when did this, when did he become well? When did this happen? And they said, well, it happened yesterday around one o'clock. And so he got to thinking to himself and he said, you know what? That was around the same time that Jesus had told me to go home and right. that my son was healed. Yes. And so after that, you want to know what happened? What Do happened? you guys want to know what happened? They all decided to believe in Jesus. Isn't that amazing? Yes. It's amazing. That is so amazing. Yes. And so, you know what? And with that, there are three things that we have to remember. Yes. When we're dealing with this. You want to share that first thing? I do. All right. Let's and it talk comes about from it. Ecclesiastics 3. Times change, but God remains the same. Several changes are taking place every day, Miss A. But God's unconditional love remains the same. He loved, healed, and provided before COVID-19, and he continues to love, heal, and provide during COVID-19. And that is so amazing. And it's extremely important for our youth and children to understand because, you know, there's a lot of people who have gotten the coronavirus and they've been actually healed. Yes. But then, unfortunately, there have been some that have been called home as well. That's right. So it's just, it's scary. It's very it's scary. It's scary. But like you said, times do change, but yeah. God remains the same. Yes. And then the next thing, you know, there's a time for everything. Yes. There is absolutely a time everything. God doesn't promise us that life is going to be perfect. That's right. But there are times when we experience different emotions from the pain of losing a loved one, finding out that we have an illness, struggling at school, to jumping for joy because we have experienced something so amazing, to laughing out loud to something extremely funny. And then even the feeling of actually receiving an honor or an offer from a college yeah. to play a sport. Yeah. So, I mean, we will at some point experience these emotions. Yes. Life is hard, yes. but we just gotta, you know, we never know when we're gonna experience these emotions. That's right. And then finally, there's the third and final thing. Yes. The third and final thing. And it's very, very important, youth and children. I want you to listen to this because this is going to help you. God will honor you for doing this. This is so important. You know why? Because it's in his word. So you must follow this. And this third thing takes discipline. It takes discipline on our part because there's a time to be silent and a time to speak. Sometimes we get into trouble when we open our mouths. That includes everyone. No one's exempt from this. Sometimes people don't understand the words that are coming out of our mouth. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? <laughs> At times, we speak and all kinds of hurtful words come out. Or we show disrespectful um, behavior to our parents or to other elders. And we tend to talk when we should be listening. We have two ears and one mouth for one reason. We must always remember to always speak for what's right and speak up. God gives us courage and we must use the courage to stand up and do what's right, the right way, even during the Corona pandemic. You know what? That is a great message because sometimes during the coronavirus and any other time in our lives, sometimes when we speak up sometimes, 
And then, we, oh, and then we try to do what's right, but we handle it differently other than the right way. And we try to handle it the wrong way. That's correct. You know, that is how you get into trouble. That's how you get arrested. That's how you get ejected from uh, football games, basketball right. games. And yeah. so we want to make sure that when we do speak up and uh, stand up for what's right the right way, then, you know, we got to be careful about yes. how we're doing those things. Does that choose our words wisely. It, absolutely. So, Miss A, what should we do during all these changes? That is an amazing question. You know, number one, we ought to have faith. A couple of weeks ago in service, we talked about having faith. We did. And number two, we should wash our hands. Absolutely. And number three, oh, this is one of the most important pieces. Absolutely. We have to pray. And number four, wear a mask. And number five, you have to ask God for wisdom in knowing when to speak and when to be silent. That's right. And number six, wash your hands. Again? Again. <laughs> wash your hands again, yes. And number seven, this one is going to get you because this one is sometimes hard to do. But we have to remember to do it anyway. But you have to love and encourage others. Yes, you do. And finally, wear a mask. You better put on that mask. Yes, because this is what's helping us stay safe and protected from the illnesses that are out there. That's right. And so you know what? To top all this off, boys and girls, we've got an activity for you. We're gonna try something out because you know what? We're talking about changes with coronavirus and changes in our lives. And so we're gonna see how you are going to handle some of these changes. You ready? Let's go. All right, we've got Aaron here and we've got Sam here and we're about to do an amazing experience. You guys ready to check it out? Yes. All right, so each bowl represents a change that may occur in your life, all right? Because you know we go through all kinds of changes, especially during coronavirus. And so what I want you to do is you're gonna put your hand in each one of these bowls. And then when you get to the end, you're gonna wash your hands and then you're gonna dry your hands. And then we're going to talk about these changes and what these changes mean in our lives. All right? All right, Sam, are you ready? Yes. All right, I want you to stick your hand in that first bowl there. All right, move on to the next. All right, what's that? Try that one. All right, now you get to wash your hands, Sam. Now, remember, you need to wash them correctly because, you know, with COVID, we got to get away all those germs. All right. Get your hands down in there. Let's go in there. Get them, get them in there. All right, good. Good job, Sam. All right, Aaron, you ready? Let's see. Oh, what is that? Well, I can't tell you yet. Come on, come to the next. Oh no, that's way too cold. <laughs> oh, try this bowl. Hmm. Now let's try this one. All right, now I want you to wash your hands. Let's get all that coronavirus off, all those germs. That's not good enough. Stay right there. Did over. you get in between the fingers? There you go. All right. So you just went through this amazing activity. And so some of the things, tell me about a little bit about what you experienced. So I experienced rough, uh, cold, soft, and uh, rainy. What do you think? What do you think? So let me show you what you actually touched because you actually touched a different type of change. Look at here. What is this? Sandpaper. It is sandpaper. The sandpaper represents fear. Sometimes we have all types of fear in our life and so when we touch it, it's like, it's kind of, it represents fear. And so right here in this bucket, 
this was a bucket of ice water. And this right here, when you touch something that's really, really cold, it's like, whoo! And so you might get a little excited. Yep. Right? All right? And so this represents excitement, the uh, change of excitement in your life. And then this bucket right here, this was a rock. It's really, really rough. And so this can kind of represent the disappointments in your life. You know, sometimes when you get mad because your parents may take away your cell phone, how does that make you feel? Oh, I bet you're pretty disappointed, huh, Aaron? So yes, the disappointments in your life. And then finally, we've got some fear here. This represents the calmness in our lives. You know that peace that, that God gives us? calmness in our lives because you know when we go through changes sometimes we have to go to God and we have to ask him to wash everything away and help us to transition through these changes all right so guys you did an amazing job today thank you so much for helping me today right up here Hello, friends and family at DC3. This is uh, your superintendent, Dr. DeAndre Weaver, superintendent DeSoto ISD. I'm really excited to connect with you all for a few moments. I know this time right now in our society, in our world, in our country, in our state, in our region, in our city uh, has been very, very challenging. Um, having to live during a time where we cannot do what we've normally been doing uh, is, is challenging to say the least. And on top of that, we have all of these other crises, pandemics that are going on in our world. The health crisis, the education crisis, the racial equity uh, crisis. Um, and, and many of us are just here um, trying our absolute best to exist. But I wanna keep you all encouraged. Uh, God is still God. He is still uh, who he said uh, that he was and is and is to come. And so we are thankful um, in spite of all of the challenges. But I wanna leave you with a couple of things that I want you to think about and remember during this time. Uh, number one, I think this is really important that we all, for students, for adults, uh, that we all create a schedule um, for ourselves each day and we stick to that schedule, you know? Um, being at home gives us an opportunity to not stick to a schedule. Uh, but I think it's really important to at least try to organize your day um, in a way where there is some level of routine. And I think within that routine, we have to do a couple of things, right? We got to include daily exercise. I try my absolute best at least five days of the week to get up early in the morning and get on my bike outside. I like to ride. And so that's what I try to do. I try to get 30 minutes of intense bike riding in, gets the heart pumping, the blood flowing, the juices going. And it's really helpful for me and my mood in my day. Um, I also take a moment every single day to just spend time with God, you know, in prayer and um, in, in worship. That really uh, helps me to create um, some opportunities to have some encounters with uh, my own Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, and that really affects my mood and how I'm able to perceive the rest of the day. So, hey, I encourage you to do the same thing within your schedule. I also uh, want to encourage you all to take frequent breaks throughout the day. Um, take moments to disconnect from whatever it is you're doing, whether that's studying for a test or doing assignments online or working with the teacher remotely, or if you are working at your job. I encourage you to take those, those frequent 10, 15 minute breaks that just allow you to clear your mind uh, so you can stay focused on the thing that uh, you're trying to do. The, the, the fifth thing I would encourage you to do too is to try to eat healthy as much as possible, as many days as you can throughout the week. Try to eat as healthy as you can um, because what you put inside of your body affects how your body operates, how it functions, how you feel, your mood. Uh, and because many people are not getting as much exercise as they should be every day, putting um, bad inputs in your body does not help your output either. And actually, it, it makes you uh, a little bit more um, uh, susceptible to being sick later on, or heck, even catching um, the, this virus, it could, have, it could harm your health. And so I would encourage you to eat as healthy as you absolutely can as many times a week uh, during the week as you can. And then I would encourage you all to schedule time to connect with friends and family. Um, you know, being at home sometimes by yourself 
uh, and disconnected to the outside world, your friends or maybe some of your extended family members, uh, it creates this sense of isolation. Uh, we know that we are not an isolation. We know that God is always with us and he wants us to be into community, be in community. So we had to, as much as we possibly can, try to create those opportunities to connect with other people, whether that's via Zoom or to get on the phone call, uh, doing FaceTime or whatever the Android thing is. Uh, just connect with as many people as you can and get that personal connection going on so that you don't feel isolated um, during this time. And then I would encourage you all to have as much fun as you can as many times a day um, as you can. So to have fun and to laugh as many times a day as you can, as often as you can a week. Uh, just laughing and having fun does something for your soul. It keeps the perspective uh, on the right things. It um, it releases, you know, all these types of uh, endorphins or toxins or whatever the scientific uh, words are for it. But it helps keep you in a good, good mood um, so that you can function during the day. And I can tell you if you get into a routine, a habit of doing um, something as simple as laughing and having fun, it'll really help uh, you get through um, this, this the, the long haul here. Uh, and then finally, I want to encourage our people, specifically um, uh, folks of color, folks that have normally have, have been traditionally raised in environments where this thing that I'm about to mention is not the norm. But if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling like you um, uh, are, are just in a, a in a bad mood, or you're not feeling like yourself, there's something you're feeling wrong. I would encourage you to absolutely connect with someone that can help. If you're a student, connect with the teacher or a staff member at the school. If you're an adult, you know, call someone, call your pastor or the folks at the church or, or someone that can provide some type of care for you. I think it's important during these times uh, that we are concerned about our mental health. We're concerned about our well-being, how we're feeling. And so I would encourage you all to do that. Hey, I know this has been a difficult time, but I am confident uh, that we will get through it. And uh, and I'm reminded of the saying that if God be for us, and actually it's in Romans uh, chapter eight, but if God be for us, who can be against us? And not just who can be against us, but what can be against us? So I wanna encourage you all to be your best selves. Can you put God first, pray, take the time that you need uh, and, and do those six or seven or eight things that I mentioned. All right, y'all, take care. So we had a really good lesson today about changes. Changes will always come. Will you prepare yourself mentally for those changes? Remember that times change, but God always remains the same. There is a time for everything. There is a time to be silent and there is a time to speak up. Romans 8 and 28 says that in all things, we know that God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So keep Christ in your heart and love him because he loves us unconditionally. So this week, let's practice on what to do during the changes that we face. Don't forget to wash your hands and to wear a mask.